our hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. 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 God, we love you tonight. We worship you, mighty God. We give you glory tonight. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory be to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Well, I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord this Wednesday evening. Amen. If not for any other reason than just to worship the Lord. Amen. Regardless if I get everything I want or if everything works out the way I want it to, none of that matters. All that matters is that I get to worship the Lord tonight. Amen. It's a blessing to be able to worship the Lord. You are called to worship the Lord. In Jesus' name. Let's do it in Jesus' name.
beautiful name his name is not beautiful because of the way it's written it's not beautiful because of what language it's been written in but it's beautiful because it brings joy it's beautiful because it brings peace it's beautiful because it brings salvation that's why the name of Jesus is so beautiful it's beautiful because it provides a covering hallelujah Thank God for that beautiful name of Jesus tonight. 
why don't you just say in Jesus <laughs> that's all right you know I'm not gonna ask you to scream it but just say it again Jesus it's a wonderful name it's a beautiful name hallelujah we thank you for the power of your name tonight oh God we thank you Lord God we love you tonight we worship you oh Blessed be the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name. If you brought an offering tonight, you can make your way to the front as we begin to worship again to this song. Amen. You can make your way front. Lord, to the Lord, we ask you to bless this offering and use it for your glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. We're Amen. not singing about the Lord. How He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost. How He healed me to the uttermost. We're not singing about the Lord. How He picked me up and turned me around. How He placed my feet. Jesus. Something about Jesus just ought to make you want to shout every once in a while. It may not always be about shouting, but there's something, there ought to be something on the inside of you that makes you want to shout every once in a while. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you give God a good hallelujah tonight? Hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank God. You can be seated just for a few short moments. Because I am going to have you stand back up for the reading of the word. Brother Joshua, you can just stand on and hold on. So stand up and hold on. Just a couple of announcements, then we'll have you stand back up in a moment. But ladies' prayer tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Kids' service will be this Friday night at 6.30 p.m. And then also youth rally March 5th at Calvary United. That'll be uh, at 7.30 p.m. That'll be here at, the, at our church. It is a sectional youth rally. As I said, Sunday adults, you're welcome. But nonetheless, if you get here early, please uh, remain standing or wait until all of the youth have sat down. Or at least we know that we have enough room for the youth that are coming from the Phoenix Springs, uh, Fort Walton Beach, Pensacola, Milton. So we'll have numerous uh, youth groups coming. Amen. Amen. So we're looking forward to that. Going to have a good time. Thank God. 
Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Well, it feels good in the house of the Lord, doesn't it? Amen. Amen. Let's clap our hands to the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Amen. You can stand back up for the reading of the word. I gave you a break. <laughs> Instead of just making you stand the whole time. Some preachers, I wonder if they even notice that we're standing out there. <laughs> and, uh, you ever feel that way? It's like, hey, what about us? When you're speaking, you can stand for an hour, but when you're listening, you need to sit down quickly. <laughs> I don't know what the problem is or what the difference is, but it makes a big difference. Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2. I'll be um, starting at verse 1, and we'll probably go down a good bit to about verse 10. Starting at verse 1. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And he said, and the woman conceived, forgive me, pardon me. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it, and the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And he, she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. Amen. I want to preach, before we go to the Lord in prayer, I'll give you my topic, but I want to preach for a little while from this thought, or this subject, the destiny of Moses. The destiny of Moses. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord. Oh, God, help us, Lord, tonight, God, to receive the word of God. Help us, Lord, God, under the anointing to minister, God. Help me, Lord, to speak the word of God in truth and sincerity under the anointing, God, with conviction, Lord. Father, let the glory of God be manifested in each and every one of our lives, God. Lord, God, we call on your name. Open our ears spiritually. Open our hearts, God, to receive the word of God in the mighty name of the Lord. We give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen as we clap our hands to the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You can be seated tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to thank all of you who are such wonderful saints of God. Uh, we were talking recently about what wonderful people we have, Sister Stacy and I, and we were having a conversation uh, with somebody else, but we were just acknowledging how wonderful of a church that we have here. And just, uh, in fact, it was, I believe, well, it was not the same conversation, but Brother Jones, uh, when he left, he said, man, you really have some gifted people in here. I said, I know we do. I'm very thankful. I said, there, there's many people in our congregation that if they come to me I, and they say, Brother Grady, the Lord told me to tell you this or so on and so forth. I, I told him, I said, you can take it to the bank. <laughs> You can take it to the bank. They are hearing from God. I don't doubt them one bit. And God has proven their ministries. Amen? Amen. So don't think God is not using you if you're not uh, singing or preaching or whatnot. You just walk in the Holy Ghost. Let God talk to you. Let God use you. Amen. I want to preach for a little while from the thought, the destiny of Moses. The destiny of Moses. Now, many of us are, are very familiar with the life of Moses. If you are not living, have not been living for God as an adult, but maybe as a child in Sunday school, you can remember way back hearing about the life of Moses. And how that Moses, as a, as a newborn baby, 
uh, that under the reign of Pharaoh during that time, Pharaoh quickly put out a decree to have all the baby boys thrown into the river. Moses was born in a very dangerous time. Can I tell you right now that God is not afraid to bring children into a dangerous world? <laughs> you say right now, what is God thinking? God is telling people to have children instead of telling them to stop. I've even heard it out of the, old, the mouth of Brother Nugent. If I were young, I would not be having children in this day and age. I've heard it out of his own mouth, but I'm glad he's not God. Because God said, I love you, Bishop. I doubt that he calls him that. I love you, son, but you're wrong. You're not God. You can't do what I can do. You might live in fear of having children in this generation. But he said, I'm not afraid of bringing children into this generation. I thank God for Brother Nugent, but he's not God. He can't protect babies. He can only protect one or two at the most, and, and that's, that's limited. You've got to put your babies in the hand of God. You've got to put your babies in the care of God is what you've got to do. And so Moses was born in a very dangerous time. You think it's dangerous to have a child now. There has not been a literal decree in the United States to say kill all baby boys that are born. You think abortion's bad, it is. But it's not commanded, it's not demanded by the government, not now. But the government said, we're going to kill all the baby boys that are born right now because I don't want to see them grow. I don't want to see God's people getting bigger. I don't want to see God's people growing in number and in strength and in power because they're going to come against me, the enemy said. That's the whole reason the enemy tries to snuff out people is because he sees their threat. You don't see your threat to, to the enemy, but he does. You think that you're just a little old nobody from nowhere and, and that your children aren't really that big of a deal to the enemy. But let me tell you one thing. They pose a significant threat to the kingdom of darkness. They do. They do. God said, not only am I going to have this boy born in the middle of turbulent times and in the midst of slavery, in the midst of a threat to his life, but I'm going to cause him to prosper. I'm going to raise him up. I'm going to protect him. I'm going to bless him. And I'm going to use him mightily and powerfully. Moses had a great destiny, but let me, t let me help you tonight. Let me help you tonight. God was not the only one in control of Moses' destiny. I know we put a lot on God, but let me help you. He wasn't the only one that was going to influence the destiny of Moses. The Bible said that Moses' mother hid him for three months. She was very instrumental in protecting Moses from what was about to happen to him. She was there, and I had a word, I got a word from God tonight right before service. You better start hiding your children right now. I'm not talking about shutting them up in the closet. I'm talking about you better hover over them in prayer and you better hide them because the enemy is wanting to attack them. God gave me that word tonight. If you got a baby, a child, you better start hiding them. You better do everything you can to shield them and hide them in the Holy Ghost. That's a word from the Lord. I didn't think about that all day and try to pick it apart or study it out. God gave it to me right back there. Hide your babies. Hide your babies. Hide them in prayer. Hide If you don't have a child, you hide somebody else's baby in prayer. You hide the spiritual babies in prayer. You hide somebody in prayer. But God is talking about a literal young child tonight. Maybe more than one. I don't know. But he said you need to hide your children in prayer. You need to hide them and protect them. Because the scripture said that she, she put them at the brink by the river's brink afterwards. When she could no longer hide Moses in her house, she put him on the brink of destruction. She hit him. The destruction was the river. The crocodiles were in the river. The Bible doesn't say that the crocodiles did anything. The Bible just said Pharaoh commanded them to throw the boys into the river. They would have drowned either way. It didn't take crocodiles to destroy them. But the river was a, a way of destruction and she hit him right there. And, and, and oh, some, we don't realize how close we are to destruction sometimes. We don't realize it. 
We don't realize it. Because of God's protection and God's grace and God's mercy. Moses was right there at the brink of destruction, but there was an ark of bulrushes that was, it didn't look like much, but it kept him from drowning. It didn't look like much, but apparently it was enough to keep him from being lost in the river. And, and, and so therefore, his destiny was being protected, not just by God, but by his mother. You have the ability. Brother, you have that ability. To influence your daughter's destiny. I have the ability to, to influence my children's destiny. We do. We all do. Even if they're not newborns, you can still influence their destiny. Might be a little more difficult. It's easier when they're younger to put things in them than when they're 30 or 20. But doesn't mean it can't be done. Does not mean it can't be done. He said, God, <laughs> with God, all things are possible. God can take your 20-year-old, your 30-year-old, your whatever-year-old, and turn them around. Hallelujah. God can do it. Thank you, Jesus. So my charge tonight to us parents who have little ones is we better hide our children. Because we have an ability to influence their destiny. Moses' destiny would have been snuffed out if she would not have hit him. You say, oh, no, 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 that's not true. God would have protected him, really. Who else was going to, you don't know that. You don't know that. Have you ever met somebody whose, in, whose destiny was affected severely by somebody else? It happens. We have a lot more responsibility than we think we do. God is the ultimate protector, but we in the Holy Ghost is what we are what, what institutes that a lot of the times. Calling on Jesus, pleading the blood of Jesus, standing in the gap, and doing what we are supposed to do. Doing what we are supposed to do. Now, so the scripture says the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And, and, and um, you know, if you go, go out and study that out. The timing and location of the placement of Moses in the water was intentional, some commentaries say, because uh, basically Pharaoh's daughter was coming down at a certain time to bless the river God. And do the, you know, she, thought, she obviously thought more highly of herself than she, you know, she thought she was going to bless the river God by taking a bath in there. I don't know. You can get off into some strange stuff when you get away from Jesus. You'll be hugging trees. I'm telling you. Talking to the ground. Getting out of the way of the insects. Not wanting to step on grandma. I was watching something a while back. It was a painstaking process. It was in India or somewhere where they believe in reincarnation. And they were wanting to build uh, some kind of structure or whatnot. And they couldn't just go in there and build. They had all the monks come out and down there, think little by little, getting the worms out and saving the worms. Because they didn't want to step on grandpa. I'm not making fun of people's stuff. But come on, folks. If you think grandpa shut up in the worm's body, you're off base. You're off base. He ain't coming back as a worm. He ain't coming back as a cow. He's not coming back as an insect. He's not coming back. He's not coming back. Nonetheless, Pharaoh's daughter, she, she went down to the river. And, and the Bible said she had compassion on him. And said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. She had an ability to influence the destiny of Moses. You say, well, I don't have babies. I don't have nobody's destiny to influence. What if she looked down there and said, let him die with the rest of them? Compassion. You don't know who you're having compassion on. When you rub shoulders with folks in the community, on your job, when you, ah, let, they're all crazy, let them all go to hell. Well, you was going to hell too. Somebody had compassion on you. Now, I'm not claiming to be anybody special, but Dale Owens, the man who won me to the Lord, he didn't know I was going to be a pastor one day. He didn't know that I was going to work full time at the church that he went to. He didn't know that I was going to teach Bible studies and do different things for the Lord. He had no idea of any of that. He just saw a young man who was lost and needed compassion. You might just be having compassion on the next Moses. 
You might be having compassion on the next Joshua, the next Apostle Paul, the next Simon Peter. You might just be having compassion on somebody who has great destiny in God. But as a baby in the brink of the river covered over in an ark of bulrushes, you know, it just don't look like much. Well, ain't none of us look like much when God found us. In fact, we still don't look like much, you know. If there's anything come out of us, good, we try to dress up the best we can and, you know, hide all our little weaknesses and flaws, and imp but we still ain't much. There just ain't much to us. If there's anything good, it's from God. That's why the Bible said, don't let, you know, don't think more highly than yourself, of yourself than you ought to. Don't, don't get to thinking too highly of yourself. Because you're not that good. <laughs> you're not that smart. You're not that big. You're not that bad. I know that's terrible grammar, but it can't be said better any, any better way. My God, she had an ability to influence the destiny of Moses. Thank you. Let's worship the Lord for a moment. In the name of the Lord God, Lord, help us to be compassionate, God, to be compassionate, Lord, towards those that we come across every day, God. Lord, that we would not be so full of ourselves that we are not compassionate, God, towards those that are without God. In Jesus' name. You know, Pharaoh's daughter had everything she needed. She had everything she wanted. She could have just chosen not to have compassion on that baby. She knew she was risking something whenever she went and grabbed that baby out of that water. The command by her own father had already been put out. You're going to risk some things when you have compassion on people. You are. You're going to risk some things. It's going to happen. There's always risk involved. Well, what if they turn on me? What if, what if this? Well, it might all happen. It just might all happen to you. They might turn on you. They might use you. They may abuse you. Abuse you. They may curse your name. I don't know. It might all happen. But you better not ever get in a place where you're not willing to have compassion on those that are helpless. Just like she had compassion on Moses. She never could have known the destiny of Moses. Probably if she'd have known his destiny, she would have left him in the river. <laughs> Probably would have. Because her kingdom fell when his rose. Her kingdom fell when his rose. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's pray one more time. God, we thank you tonight. Oh, God, we love you, Lord. We worship you. We give you glory and honor and praise, oh God. We worship you. We magnify you, Lord. God, we bless your name tonight, God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We need your divine touch, oh God. In the name of the Lord, we need your grace and mercy, Lord. God, we give you glory, God. <laughs> In the name of the Lord Jesus, God, work your divine work, God. I want you to pray right now for the babies of the church, spiritual babies and physical babies, in the name of the Lord. Yes! Hallelujah! 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 Oh God, we love you tonight, Lord. We worship you. We give you glory tonight, God. We exalt your name tonight, oh God. Bless your children, God, in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God, bless your children tonight. In the name of Jesus, cover the children of the church, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, Brother Joe, Joe Thibodeau, before I had children, he was telling me one night, he said, he said he was sitting in his house and his kids were sitting there and, and he said the Lord spoke to him. And I don't remember everything he told him. I just remember he showed him. 
He said, they are manifestations of my presence. In other words, he was letting them know, you be careful how you handle them. They're manifestations of my presence. They are. I know they don't listen sometimes, but I know they can be aggravating to you sometimes. I know. But they're manifestations of God's presence. And we need to be careful. Be careful how you handle somebody else's child. Not just your own. Be careful how you handle somebody else's child. Don't start handling kids, being rough on them that, that, that aren't yours, but you wouldn't do that to your child. Right, right. Amen. Love them like you'd love your own. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I could go further, but man, I just don't know if I need to tonight. I'm telling you, God is, you, you're, on, you're in two camps. We're in both camps. Some of us in one, but either way, two. You have the ability to influence destiny. Moses had a great destiny, but it could have been snuffed out at the beginning because of a parent that wasn't willing to hide him and because of a woman who wouldn't have been willing to have compassion. You can snuff somebody's destiny out by not having compassion on them and by not hiding them in prayer. Let's stand. This is not a threat. This is not... But there is, there is a, I know there's a, a soberness in it and a somberness in it because we do need to understand. We're dealing with eternal souls. And if you're not having to hide a child like I have in prayer, you definitely need to have compassion on people. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, we can hide them, friends. <laughs> You can hide folks in prayer is what you can do. You can protect their destiny. You can protect them from the enemy when you hide them in prayer. Hallelujah. You have huge wings in prayer and you can cover them with your wings in prayer is what you can do. And there's no enemy that can get up under those wings, Brother Overstreet. They, the enemy cannot steal them away from you. Now, they can make dumb decisions and get out from under you. But the enemy can't take them. No, sir. Can't do it. Hallelujah. Hide your kids in prayer. Be compassionate. Be compassionate to those that are out of the way. Those that don't know the Lord. Those that are helpless. Just be compassionate in Jesus' name. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord. You can come around these altars if you want. If you've got somebody, you may not have a little one, but if you want to hide your children in prayer, even if they are older, even if they are adults, if you want to come up around these altars and hide them in prayer, hallelujah, say, Lord, I cover them tonight, God. I stand in the gap, Lord, and I hide my children in prayer, God. We hide the children of this church, oh God, in prayer, God, in the name of the Lord. <laughs> Lord, help us to be compassionate towards those, God, in this city. In the name of the Lord Jesus, cry out to God for your children. Cry out to God for the children of the church. Cry out to God for those in this city that need our compassion. In the name of the Lord Jesus.
Rejoice over that tonight. Lord, we thank you, Lord. <laughs> yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord. God, we love you, Lord. We worship you, mighty God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, weave it with fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer. It would do good. We would do good to do some fasting in this situation. If you want God to protect your loved ones, get some fasting involved as well. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, there's a story. It's not a story. We, it's, it's a true story. A testimony. Uh, a lady that it went to the church in Lake Charles where Sister Stacy grew up. Uh, she, was, she raised her son in the apostolic church. and He got off and started doing his thing. And he got involved deep into drug dealing and drug... Uh, smuggling. He was bringing drugs from California to Lake Charles, Louisiana, crystal meth and cocaine by, by the large amounts. And, and he was just about as far away from God as he could possibly be. 
And he was in California in Los Angeles one night making a drug deal, picking up drugs. And he had about four or five Hispanic guys, gangsters, that had guns drawn on him. And were about to smoke him. And his mama woke up in the middle of the night. <laughs> she said, Lord, I've, and I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to condemn anybody. But friend, let me tell you, there's power in a woman's uncut hair. It's not in the hair. It's in her covenant with God. Ain't no magic hair around here. And I'm not condemning anybody. I'm not trying to make somebody feel. Don't, don't even go there. But we've got to talk about the power of a covenant. And she said, Lord, she said, I've not cut this hair in 30 years. And it wasn't that her hair was longer than anybody else's. It didn't go through four feet out the door, but she just laid it out on that bed. And she said, God, I can't reach him, but you can. He's in California. I don't know what's going on, God. I don't know what's happening. She said, but I've made this covenant with you. And I told you and I promised you I would not cut my hair because I've obeyed the word of God. And she said, I need you to look out for my boy. I need you to protect my boy. I need you to watch over him. I need you to deliver him and rescue him. She had no idea what was going on. The Lord just woke her up. And she began to pray and provide that covering. And let me tell you, friend, that covering reached from Lake Charles, Louisiana, all the way to the streets of Los Angeles, California. Amen. And he later testified. He said, I have no idea why. But he said, even they said it. They looked at me and said, with the guns in my face, and said, white boy, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm giving you a chance to leave tonight. All right, man. Tell exactly why. Because somebody was praying. Somebody was providing the covering. And he's an apostolic preacher right now. He's an assistant pastor in Kansas right now. He's living for God. He's on fire for God. He's married. He's got kids. He's a preacher. He is preaching the gospel. He teaches multiple Bible studies every week. God snatched him out of the depths of sin because of a praying mama. That provided covering when he was about to be killed right there on the streets of Los Angeles. I like to say something. Two things comes to my mind of all of this that I've seen and heard tonight. Prayer changes things. You can take that to any man's back. I had a praying mama. I had a praying grandmother. I had a praying five sisters. And somewhere down the line from grandmother to mom to sisters. Prayer went forth. But you know why I'm here tonight, Brother O'Neill? Not because I knew that it was Wednesday night, time to come to church, time to worship my God. But the reason I'm here tonight yeah. is because somebody, That's right. someplace, and somewhere, right. over in some time, yeah. some city, right. some area, pray yeah. for this person right here, brother. That's right. And that's why I'm standing here, full, full of the Holy Ghost, yeah. and feeling the power and the unshot of the Spirit of God. Yeah. My mother prayed for me. Yeah. My sister prayed for me. Yeah. My grandmother I'm not here by choice. That's right. But I'm here by the Spirit of God. That's right. That's right. I could have been anywhere else tonight that I so wanted to be if I wanted to be somewhere. That's right. But I'm here. That's right. We're here, Brother O'Neill. That's good. Somebody pray for us. That's exactly right. Now, you know, my wife told me the other day. Hey man, she said, see you have her daughter's two kids was in the house. And they're a house full. Uh, I won't say a handful. They're a house full. Yeah. But Brother O'Neill, she said, did you notice there's something different about Dawson? See, Dawson's a little kid. Hey Amen. And you know, oh man, he's just full of all life. Energy and all he and all in. It seems like nobody can handle him and do nothing with him. 
say nothing to him that would calm him down. Oh, he's just like Grace Light. <laughs> Amen. Like Grace Light. But you know, my wife said, Did you know something about him? I said, Yeah, I did. She gave him a canned Coke. See, usually he'll take the canned Coke. Uh, amen. Not only drink it, but throw it everywhere. Amen. Anywhere he wants to go. You see? But let me tell you what he done. Amen. He took that Coke. He went in to the living room. Amen. And he, he got a little thing off the table. He set it down and he set his coat on top of me. Like a good kid. Yeah. 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 Not like some wild Indian. Why? What's the difference? Now, you been telling me what the difference is? Oh, you know, in church, it's because we, me and the wife, have been praying yeah. for him. Yeah. And not only him. Amen. But the little girl, she jumped across Paul Paul's lap, pulled her shirt up, and she a rough back. Huh? Huh? You do that? Yes, sir. I rubbed her back. I paddled behind <laughs> But I also prayed for her. Yes. Amen. I said, God, save my, 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 my children and my grandchildren. That's right. And not only them, but you know, Brother O'Neill, these things touch me tonight. They open up my understanding. See, Mama prayed for me. I was around him. Brother just as mean as Dawson never thought he was going to do it. But Mama knew somebody different. That's right. Mama knew God. That's right. And my grandmother knew God. Amen. And my mom and grandma were praying. You know my sister. Amen. Amen. She lost her husband a few weeks back. But let me tell you, and I hope I ain't taking too long. I'm not taking away from what he preached. I'm not adding to it. I'm just telling you the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth. And the truth has set you to death. See, somebody knew what truth was. And they prayed for me. And I'm free tonight. Amen. But Tina, or we call her Tina. Her name is Ernestine. Amen. Tina, little old deal, has prayed for me many, many times. And I got others. I got four other sisters. When I was over younger, crawling around, fighting in the jungle, in the mountains, living from one day to the next, there was somebody back here praying. Oh God, don't never tell me prayer won't change things. Oh, come on. Yeah. Because I know yes. I've been changed. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah! I've been changed! Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Lord I'm looking for God to come. And when He comes, not only will I see Him, but I'm going back with Him wherever heaven is. Amen. Wherever heaven is, Sister Hawkins, that's where I'm going to abide. Amen. Amen. So don't ever give up on these kids. I told Brother O'Neill many times. You know, and I've got two kids. You know, you know, I picked two kids out. Amen. Of all the kids. Little Asher and me. And they touch me every time I Come to church. Now that doesn't mean I don't love the other ones. That doesn't mean God don't love the other ones. But they play a part in my heart. Amen. 
Amen. I told my wife, I brought two. I said, look at how it made you cheap. Yep. And then that heart, and then that little mind, she worshiped in God. Amen. And so they was. Because somebody, her dad, her mom, and other people has prayed for that child. Not only her, not only Ashley. And I see Ashley running around. Oh man, that just blesses my heart. Man. When he ran. Tonight, I seen Brother Bill look at him and smile at him as he did. <laughs>